everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Bailey and I'm the owner of Goo Goo Kids. Today's video is going to be another market prep vlog slash week in the life of a small business owner vlog. And this weekend is actually going to be pretty crazy because I have a pretty big event. Um, it's a two day event in Bradenton, Florida, and that's about two-ish hours away from me, um, south. And it's some sort of like charity fishing tournament and it's all day Saturday and all day Sunday. So I'm gonna have to leave here pretty early in the morning and that's kind of what's gonna make it so stressful is that you have to be set up and ready to go at around 9.30 in the morning if I'm remembering correctly. So if I have to be ready at 9.30 a.m. and it takes me two hours to get down there, I have to leave the house pretty early and that's both Saturday and Sunday. And it is those two days, but I can't be set up. Like I can't leave my setup and come home. I'll have to fully pack up and then come back and set up again because um, it's outside. So that's a little bit stressful, but I'm really excited. Um, it was heavily, heavily recommended to me to do it. So I'm excited and it's in Manatee County. So this week I'm gonna try to get all of the Manatee stuff done that I can. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on this week is trying to just make a ton of stuff for the event this weekend. And it really is always my goal to make a lot of stuff for my markets, but I feel like this week, especially because of the, um, like the massiveness of the event on Saturday and Sunday, I think it's gonna be really important for me to have a lot of good options for stuff. So that is going to lead me to my to-do list for this week. So the first thing that I'm going to do that I need to do before I get started on anything else is I need to pack an order for Christina. So I'll pack that for her real quick. And then I'm going to cut my DTF prints. I've got, I've got three rolls in here. I think there are three rolls in here. It's about the same size as the box I ordered last time, but I got three times the amount. So it must be packed pretty tight in here. And I, the first round of DTF prints I got from uh, Ninja Transfers and the last round of prints I got in this one are from Primal Graphics. I think it's like that. Yeah, Primal and then Graphics, but Graphics is spelled G-R-A-P-H-X. And this is like a company in Charlotte. It's a small business. And I thought I would try it um, the last time um, to see how it worked and how it uh, compared to the Ninja Transfers. And I feel like they're very, very similar so it's kind of really up to the preference of if you want to use a bigger company like Ninja Transfers, if you want to use a smaller company like Primal Graphics. Um, I'm going to continue to support both companies because I think they're really good, but at the moment I think that I'm going to go with Primal Graphics uh, moving forward just because it is a little bit more inexpensive and a little bit more um, accessible for me and other small business owners. So that is what I want to say about that. So after I cut those, I need to press them obviously to the shirts that I got. So probably today what I'm going to do is maybe move my sewing machine and try to make a space where I can cut and sort all of my graphics that I have, like all my DTF prints. And I also want to pull out all of my clothes and sort them into the different like clothes, obviously like the different um, colors and stuff like that. So I want to do that. Something that I want to do that I'm probably like not gonna have time to do this week um, I really want to clean up in here and like try to make my space a little bit more feng shui. -ed. It just like gets really backed up with kind of like stuff during the week and like piles of like shirts, piles of like just piles of everything. So I would like to clean it up maybe. So maybe while things are pressing or I'm embroidering something, I can try to do like a little tidying here and there. I want to finish sewing my book sleeves. And get those done but I feel like those are kind of lower on the priority list compared to the embroidery and the DTF stuff so those are on the list but they may not be um, they may not be done this week um, I want to test out some more embroidery designs so today I think I'm going to hoop some of the like normal ivory comfort colors like two of them like this color two of them and do the strawberry on them as well because I have the strawberry on the boxy that I did last week so this is the boxy so it's like that it's like this is the normal and then this is the boxy um so I want to put some of those on the normal hold on my battery is about to die so let me change that out real quick okay we're back at it so I want to do the strawberry on the normal ivory uh do like maybe like one or two in each size that I have and then the rest do the Florida um DTF 
and the other embroidery designs that I want to test out I'll test them out first on the um, on the totes I want to do an orange one kind of like this and I also want to do a manatee one I want to do the manatee one before I do the orange one just because we're going to Manatee County this weekend so that's what I want to do. I need to fix the tent leg. So uh, I got the tent leg from West Shade that was delivered. So Ethan's gonna need to put that back on because I trust him more to do that than me to do it. I need to pay for some more markets because I was accepted to a couple ones um, that I would like to do. The There's one that I want to do called the Market Elaine and it's on a Friday night. It's like every first Friday and it's in Wesley Grove. Florida I think that's where it is and it's about an hour and a half and it is a Friday night market so that's a little bit tricky but I'm gonna see if I can coordinate and make it work um, I need to finish editing the collapsible shelf video and the plans so if you ever watch my video and you're like oh like the, the collapsible apparel shelf is really really cute where did she get that um, so Ethan made it and we videoed it and I made plans for it so that should be available soon so I need to edit that. It's really almost done. I just need to do like a voiceover and a couple of other things. And then maybe I want to start to film a little bit of the how to do markets video series. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that this week considering all the things that I want to get done. Um, so yeah, that is what I am going to be working on this week. And also I maybe want to work on a couple of blog posts. I have like a couple blog posts up on my website that are related to like mom stuff. But I thought I would kind of make, like when I make the how to do markets, how to do pop-ups videos, like I would do an accompanying blog post. So maybe like I'll try to work on that in tandem with kind of like my script. But yeah, so that is the game plan for this week. It doesn't seem like that much stuff, but I definitely know it's going to take me a long time. So, oh, also I want to say an update on using the air purifier. I definitely think it works. I definitely think the air purifier has definitely made the air feel a lot less like heavy and dense with like sublimation fumes and DTF fumes. So that's really, really good. I really appreciate that, obviously. So yeah, so that is my update on that. I'm gonna go ahead and pack the order for Christina. This order is for Christina in Tennessee and she got the Ethan bag to be her market bag. So Christina has definitely been a very positive supporter to me on YouTube. So thank you so much, Christina. So this is gonna have the your order was packed on YouTube sticker, the packing slip and my little thank you card. So yeah, so everyone that has ordered a bag and said that they are going to use it as a market bag, like thank you so much, that's so sweet. So yeah, so I definitely just appreciate everyone always like being so kind and supportive and also like I just want to say thank you so much for this community that's like stoked about doing markets together because especially I feel like especially going into the summer now doing markets can be pretty stressful and pretty kind of like time consuming difficult all of the above but it's just really nice to have a group of people that care so much so that is going to Christina and thank you again I've got my heat press heating up so that I can press my shirts before I embroider them. So while that's heating up, I'm going to go ahead and cut a few pieces of my stabilizer. So for the embroidery of the strawberries on the Comfort Color shirts, I've been using this Sulky um, Soft and Sheer. And it's kind of just like a cutaway poly mesh like I was saying in last week's vlog. And I definitely think it's made a difference in how good that turned out. I think that in addition to the um, to the water soluble stabilizer on top definitely made a huge difference in how it embroidered on a t-shirt because I feel like previously in the past, sometimes like embroidery on a t-shirt can be way too heavy and it'll just like look really, really bad. So I definitely think that using this in combination with the soluble topper really was a game changer and just made it look so good. Okay, so I cut out like four pieces. I definitely need to cut out more in just a second, but I think four is a good number to start with. To prep for this shirt, which definitely could have been overkill, I went ahead and pressed it for 10 seconds on the heat press and then I folded it in half and pressed it again to kind of find my midpoint so 
that is what I did. Probably unnecessary to do that first press, but I wanted to make sure that it was nice and flat and ready to go. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, use my Hoopmaster hooping station with my eight by nine hoop and just follow the same steps that I did last time. Hoop in my stabilizer and putting my shirt on. Warning goes up top, one, two, three. Now I've got a hoop, now I'm gonna put it on my machine. I've gone ahead and taped down my water soluble topper just so that it doesn't shift or anything while it is stitching out. But while this is stitching out, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox my DTF prints and cut them out. So let's just get to it. You look at me like I'm crazy when I shut my feelings out. You look at me like I'm different Still you stay cause you feel something real Get so lost in my moments Doesn't mean I don't need you I, 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 I fell in love with your colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it there's something different about us And the reason why we stay Stay We fly around like paper planes They never know where we will fall Nobody can see us Still they wanna tear us apart There's something different about the way we are Soluble topper. I can't talk today. So that is what it is looking like. And then I need to spritz it to get the marking pin off and all that goodness. But let's check it out. I assume it's going to look good because it looks good on the crappie topping ones. But let's see here. Cute. Yeah, I think that like the strawberries on the shirts are like so stinking cute. So I'll make a couple more of those. I'll go ahead and maybe, I guess I'll try to hoop and put one on and just have it going even if the boys get up. So I'll probably go ahead and hoop another one of those and put that on the machine. And I'm gonna try to get two of each size. And I think I have small through 
either 3x or 4x i'll have to see how many i ordered but i thought i would also show you the new dtf prints that i've got but this is the roll i still have left to cut so i still have a good bit left but i've got this one it says kind people are my kind of people and i think that's so stinking cute it's big so it's gonna be a really big print on a shirt so i really like that this is what's gonna go on umber sun kissed it's gonna be like an orange on orange and i think that that's gonna look really really cute i don't know what color top this is gonna go on but it's that floral that i put on a bag last week i think that, that looks really really good this one i'm a little bit nervous about because the lines are so thin but i think that's so cute it says very your regrets florida like from i think that's a taylor swift song i've not listened to it yet i do like taylor swift but i've had a hard time like finding time to listen to music lately so this is the Barry your regrets florida so i'm a little bit nervous about this one like i said because the lines are super thin but i think it's gonna work if it doesn't i'll just have to scrap that design and then i've got overstimulated so it's gonna be like bop because overstimulated was really popular on my hat so that's what that is gonna look like i think that's cute and then i've got find me under the palms a very floridian i like that and then if you watched last week's vlog i put this on some of the sublimation shirts but i'm gonna put it on just like normal shirts too and then yeah like i said i still have this roll to cut out and there's some manatee ones on that roll there are a couple of manatee ones so probably what i'm going to do now is i'm gonna go ahead and hoop another shirt and put it on the machine and i think what I may start to do is go ahead and start sublimating the Florida shirts onto the normal ivory comfort colors and go ahead and get that started. So I'm going to hoop that, put that on machine and start to heat up my heat press. So let's go ahead and try to knock as much of that out as possible for nap time is over because nap time is kind of coming to a close. I think I'm not hundred percent sure, but it's getting close to four o'clock right now. And that's kind of when they start moving. So I'm going to go ahead and try to knock this out. probably just going to work on more embroidery and I'm probably going to go ahead and start working on the Florida collage shirts but I wanted to show you the sun-kissed shirt that I was working on earlier <gasps> look how good that turned out I think that is so cute I love the orange on orange so that is what that is looking like so I'm going to make a couple more of these this week I think but definitely it's going to be really important to me to go ahead and try to make as many of the um Florida collage as possible just because those have been my best sellers and I want to have as much of that as possible for this weekend so I'm going to go ahead and start working on that and I'll go ahead and hoop and put a strawberry shirt on the embroidery machine.
Happy Tuesday. Today I'm going to pack an order and then I also want to finish cutting out the DTF prints. I almost got done cutting them out last night, but then I stopped and ate dinner. But I thought I would show you what they are looking like. Let me actually cut this one so you can see what this one looks like a little bit better. But I've got a ton of new designs. There are a couple of them where the lines are a little bit thin and i'm a little bit worried about how it's going to print but i think it's going to be fine like how it's going to press on the shirt i got this one it says respect the locals and it's a little manatee i showed you this i don't think i showed it to you last night but i showed it to you i had that um where i printed it out and did some sublimation with it so i've got that one and then i've got a couple more here that are under my pile of prints that i need to finish so probably what i'm going to do is go ahead and finish cutting these out and then I'm going to pack the order. So yeah, so I'm going to cut these off camera and then I'm going to pack the order on camera and then I'm going to start trying to hoop strawberry shirt to put on the machine and then start pressing the Florida collage shirts. Today's order is for Tristan and she got the Florida collage shirt. Super cute and she is actually local. She is in Land of Lakes. So hey Tristan. Okay, so I've got her thank you card her packing slip and I also for the DTF shirts have been including like a little um, just like extra care guide you can wash it like normal but here are just some tips and tricks on how to keep it looking fresh and bright so I'll put that under there now I'll be able to easily do this okay so now I have my your order was packed on YouTube sticker use that to close it up do a little foldy situation I'm gonna do this. Put it in there. And bag her up. Now, like I always do, I like to put the shipping label on the back instead of the front because I want the thank you to be visible. I just have to go drop this off, but that's coming to Tristan. Before I start pressing my Florida collage shirts, I'm gonna go ahead and hoop the final shirt that I'm gonna do for the strawberry embroidery. Um, it's just like one of the normal uh, ivory comfort colors. I'm gonna work on doing that so I can go ahead and get that stitching out. And then that's going to be the last of the strawberry embroidery that I'm going to be doing, I think, this week because I want to go ahead and switch over to doing a new design that I want to have done for the, um, for the craft fair this weekend. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up and put it on the machine so that once this is done, I can change my thread colors because I think I need like five new thread colors so i gotta change a bunch of threads on my machine so that's kind of why i want to go ahead and knock this out so i can go ahead and get that started so i'm gonna put this on the machine and i'm gonna go ahead and pull my shirts that i want to do the florida collage on and go ahead and get those um pressed and then find my midpoint and then just go ahead and start trying to knock as many of those out as possible today
This morning house so clear a light as any To see the horizon in the far Excuses were two for a penny But they've all gone out the window of this car And when I feel the wind on my on the final press of the um, of the Florida collage shirts I'm gonna work on doing a test stitch out of a manatee design and I'm gonna do it on a tote bag first um, I think it's kind of a pretty small design so the idea is that I'm mostly gonna be putting it on shirts but I wanted to do it on a bag first because I thought that would be really really cute so I think like it's pretty tiny so I think I might even want to put it up here because I think that it's about like it's almost four inches. It's almost like four by four. So it's pretty small. So I think what I'm going to do is I wanted to kind of like, I think I'm going to do it like that. And so that it'll be around that on the bag. Okay. So I think that's how I'm going to do that. And I kind of think that my kids are waking up. So I think this is going to be the last thing I'm going to be able to do. I actually might do the bigger hoop just to make sure it's good, actually. So I was going to do the 4.25 hoop, but I think I'm going to go by the 5. Is it 5.5 by 5.5? Yeah, I think I'm going to feel more comfortable if I put it in just a slightly bigger hoop instead of trying to do it too close. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm gonna take this to machine and hoop it and test it out. This is the little manatee design that I'm gonna be doing. And I've kind of got the colors a little bit different than what it shows here. So I'm doing like a light blue and then a darker blue and then kind of like a bluish green. And then I'm gonna do a black eye, I think. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Or um, instead of doing the, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do the black eye and see how that goes. And if I don't like the black eye, I might switch it out to like the darker green as the eye 
So I'm gonna do the stitch out and see how it goes. It only takes 16 minutes. I went ahead and cut the jump stitches, but that is what that manatee stitch out looks like. I think that looks so good. So it's bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So that's really, really good. I thought for some reason it was gonna be like half the size of this. So it doesn't actually look that crazy on there. And I think on a t-shirt, it would be the perfect size. But I think that turned out really, really good. It might be kind of hard to tell on camera, but this is a different color than this color. So this is like a little bit darker, but I love that. I thought about doing gray. I pulled out some gray thread to see, but I do think I like it in the blue. I think it gives it a good, like, I don't know. I feel like if it was gray, it would just blend into stuff too much. I feel like the blue is like a lot cuter. Maybe I'll also do one in gray later on and kind of see how I feel about it. But so far, I think that doing it in the blue is a lot better. It's Tuesday night and the game plan is to embroider the manatee on the crop purple one. So kind of similar to the hat situation that I have going on or I had going on. I actually sold out of all of my manatee embroidered hats. So I guess this is kind of going to be the alternative to it. So I think what I'm going to do tonight is go ahead and hoop this and try to do maybe like two or three tonight. And while I do that, I guess I'm going to fold and put up all of the um, Florida collage shirts I made today because I made a lot. So I've got a ton of them done. So I want to count how many I have done. And then if I have time, I might want to go through my inventory and kind of see like what shirts I want to pair with what design. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and hoop this and I actually am gonna pull down my hooping station and use that for this. Um, I didn't use it with the bag because it's a bag so it's not as hard to hoop. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull that down and hoop my stabilizer, put this on there. And then I also cut little water soluble toppers to put on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down here and show you that setup. I've gone ahead and replaced my little adjustable things on here with my five and a half inch hoop helper thing. I'm trying to remember what this is called. I have to remember what it's called and put it on the screen, but it's just like the little like fixture hooping station that you put on this hooping station, or you can also do like the freestyle arm, but this is what I do for shirts. So I just switched it out with the adjustable pieces and hooped my stabilizer and now putting on my crappie toppy. Beautiful, okay. And so I've got my point pretty in the center, I think. I think I might wanna scoot it up just a tad. Try to get it right in the middle. One, two, three. So good. Okay, that feels super in the middle, so I love that. I actually wanted to, let me see if I can put it up here. I wanted to put this on there first before I took it off, but forgot. Now I'm all hooped and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my machine. If only I could finish something, run straight through to the end.
Wednesday. The game plan today is very similar to yesterday. I want to finish putting the manatee on the shirt and all I have left to do for the ones that I did last night is I need to cut the jump threads over here because the jump threads are kind of like holding the water soluble stabilizer on there and I also just need to cut the jump threads in general. So I have two more of the purple shirts that I need to do. One of those I would like to take the time and record doing some of it on my phone and be able to make like a reel out of that or a TikTok or short or something. But something that I kind of decided to do is I'm going to put the manatee on some kid shirts too because um, I have a bunch of kid t-shirts and I think that that would be really really cute to try to get all of those done for the event this weekend. So I'm going to do that and I'm also going to try to work on putting the Florida collage on the tank tops. And once I've done that, if I get that done, I'm going to try to put the um, manatee, like respect the locals, on the pink tank tops. So I'm going to try to do that. Also, I'm kind of getting a little bit of a late start today. I probably say that a lot, but I'm kind of getting a late start today because I decided to go ahead and start the recipe for a sourdough loaf of bread. My starter that I have like made myself, like I started on my own, is looking pretty good, but I'm still a little bit sketched out to use it. I wanna let it mature a little bit, but my King Arthur one is doing really, really good. So I've gone ahead and started the dough for that, and I think I only have like 45 minutes until I need to start my first round of uh, stretch and folds. So I've got 45 minutes until I need to do that. And then I also want to do like a discard recipe, like a chocolate chip cookie one. And I realize though I don't have brown sugar. So I need to go get brown sugar later tonight. So I actually might do the sugar cookie version of it. So that's a lot of information, but I'll show you my loaf if it comes out good tomorrow. I guess I'll show you if, even if it doesn't come out good. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and hoop one of the purple t-shirts, put it on the machine. And then I'm gonna pull out my tank tops and start pressing them and getting them ready.
today I got a ton of embroidery done so I'm really pleased about that I got a bunch of kids shirts made and all I really have left to do for the rest of it is cut the rest of my jump stitches I sprayed most of them with water to remove the marking pin and then I do cut the stabilizer and cover it with um, soft and sheer not soft and sheer tender touch I need to cover it with tender touch and then I will put it on the heat press to iron it in and tender touch basically is just like a soft um, like fabric thing that you put on the back of your embroidery that covers your stitches and makes it soft against your skin so I want to do that especially for the kids stuff for the t-shirts um, I'm gonna do it too just cuz I think it'd be good but for the kids stuff especially I think it's gonna be important so I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on cutting these jump stitches um, and once I get done with that, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do the tender touch tonight just because I have some other stuff I want to do, like work on my sourdough loaf. And Ethan replaced my tin leg today, so that's really, really good. So I also need to kind of look and see how much, like, how many of the Florida collage shirts I have left that I want to do. I think I did two in each size. So that's not a ton really. So I need to look and see how many shirts I have. And I think tomorrow what I want to do is maybe make some more um, strawberry embroidered shirts, but use some of the Bella Canva shirts that I have that I've not used yet. So I think what I'm gonna do, like I said, cut these jump stitches and maybe go ahead and start doing some of the stabilizer stuff. So let's just go ahead and crank it out. I've been listening to the Hunker Games. Um, I listened to the prequel one. And that was really good. I've never actually read The Hunger Games. I really liked Hunger Games when it came out, obviously. And I didn't realize how short of a book it is. So I just started it today. And I listened to my stuff really fast. And I'm over halfway through it. I think I'm exactly halfway. That's so funny. I'm exactly halfway. So I have half of the book left. And I'm not going to finish it tonight, obviously. But I'm kind of close to finishing it. But Ethan also went to the storage facility tonight to grab some more Ethan bags and some more breakfast bags and to find my hooks that I used to clamp the totes. I also finished a manatee tote bag um, and I filmed that and I also filmed on my phone um, doing the purple shirt. So I'm really stoked about that. I'm getting that short form content in too. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you up probably on top of my heat press and show you what I'm working on.
sourdough loaf turned out so stinking good. Uh, I'm like so incredibly pleased with that. You have no idea. I was so worried that it was not gonna turn out good because when I was shaping it last night or I was doing like my bolt fermentation or whatever, it seemed way bigger and way stickier than the girl's recipe that I was following from TikTok. And I was like, this is gonna be a hot mess but it turned out so incredibly good. I don't know, I'm gonna try to remember exactly everything I did with like the weights and stuff because she gives like a range of weights for like the water and um, I guess the flour, she like gives the correct weight or gives like one weight, but for the water, she gave a range and then for the proofing, she gave a range too. So I'm gonna write down what I did and hopefully that that just works out. But I'm so happy about that. The next time I'm gonna make it, I think I'm gonna include some garlic or I might do like a chocolate one. So ooh, the possibilities are endless, but I'm gonna try another recipe from TikTok that's like just, you do it like, you do everything in one day. I think you even bake it in that one day. I could be wrong, I don't remember but it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, this one had a lot of steps to it for sure. So it took me a full like 24 hours to get it done, but it was good. And I definitely think because I've done it once, the more I do it, obviously the easier it will become. Um, so that is my sourdough update. And another update that I found out, um, I got an email this morning uh, for more information about load-in on Saturday. And so actually we will be able to kind of like leave our setup because they will have security there overnight. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my tent and my table and I'm going to take down my wooden rack because um, I don't want it to get like wet or anything like that in case it like gets a little bit drizzly or dewy or anything like that. So I'm going to leave all of my main setup stuff and just like pack up my inventory. So that'll make Sunday a lot easier. And also, I thought they wanted us, to, based on a previous email, it sounded like they wanted us to be set up by 9.30 in the morning, but this email said that it's gonna start at 11. So they said they'll close the ability of vendors to get in at 10. So that to me makes it feel a lot better because I thought I was gonna have to like leave here at like five o'clock in the morning, but now I don't have to leave that early. I'm still gonna have to leave early, but not like five o'clock in the morning early. So. Very thankful for that. Very thankful that I don't have to fully pack up and then fully unpack the next day. So I feel like that's like a weight lifted off my shoulders. But today what I'm going to be focusing on is I'm going to be putting the strawberry design on some black shirts. My mom said that on black shirts it probably would look really cute. And I'm definitely agreeing with her when I think about it. So I've got these black Bella Canvas shirts. So the Bella Canvas shirts are more of like a ladies fit as opposed to like the unisex of the comfort color. So it is a little bit more fitted. So I definitely think this is a good option for people who maybe don't want a super flowy shirt. Or they kind of just want more of like a fitted shirt. So I think that's gonna be a good idea. So what I'm gonna do is I think I have like seven of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I have seven of these. So probably what I'm going to do is do some lint rolling. That was just my heat press heating up. So lint rolling, heat press it, and then go ahead and put it on the machine. And then the other thing that I'm going to be doing today, probably while this is embroidering, is put the tender touch on the back of the um, embroidered shirts that I did. So I also need the heat press for that to make that a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And once I get done with that, I'm definitely hoping that I get done with that pretty quickly because I would like to continue putting more of the DTF shirts or like the DTF prints on the shirts because I would like to get done with that. So yeah, I have a ton of embroidered stuff that I did. So I'm really happy with that, but I do need to put some more of the Florida collage on shirts, I think. And then also try to do the other tank tops with the manatees. Cause I'm trying to get all manatee apparel made and done for this weekend. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to pressing these Bella canvas shirts.
It's Thursday evening and kind of a quick update. So I was planning, you know, on like driving down Saturday morning, driving back, and then driving back down Sunday morning and driving back. But we looked it up again and it's actually like three hours to the exact location of where I'm going to be. And I don't think that's a good idea. Ethan doesn't think that's a good idea or a safe idea. So we actually like booked a hotel. So I'm gonna go down there tomorrow night instead of Saturday morning. I'm gonna spend the night there Friday night and Saturday night and come back on Sunday after it's done. And originally I was looking at Airbnbs, but Airbnbs have lost, lost their mind. Thankfully the Airbnb that I have in Jacksonville is like pretty chill, but I was looking at places that I could stay and I don't want to do a whole, like, I don't want to do a room in a house because that like freaks me out. All the rooms in the houses were like really weird because they weren't super inexpensive and some of the things were like, oh, like shared bathroom, no lock on the bedroom door, like this is like an up and coming neighborhood. Um, so some of the fees are waived due to the condition of the neighborhood and it's like, uh, I don't want to stay in a neighborhood where fees are being waived because it's scary. And then I found this like one house that I was like, oh, this would be perfect. And it was like gonna be $200 for the whole weekend. And I was like, that's great. And I went to go like, you know, look and make sure that, like I just wanna go look at the amenities or whatever and then find where it was on the map. And the cleaning fee was gonna be like $300. And it's like, for one guest, for one guest for two nights, the cleaning fee was gonna be like three hundred dollars. So I was like, I'm not even like gonna be there. I'm just gonna be there to sleep. So that to me is an unreasonable price. So I ended up getting a hotel, and the hotel's like 18 minutes away, which isn't bad, but it's like it felt like a safe option, and it felt like a cleaner option, and it felt just like a you know price effective option. Um, I definitely also feel like I feel more comfortable since I'm by myself, like staying in a hotel. Um, there are a lot of motel options and that's also just like not something that I want to do. So I found a hotel that I booked and I'm gonna be going there. It's a little bit stressful, not I guess like not stressful, but it is just kind of like an added expense. It's like, I think it was like about 300 something dollars. So it just kind of sucks like feeling like, oh my gosh, like I gotta sell enough stuff to pay at least for my hotel. So that's like a whole, a whole thing so I'm a little bit stressed out about that and also this afternoon I didn't really get to do very much embroidery and I don't even know if you can tell because like the lights a little bit like flashy in here so it's been really stormy there was like a tornado warning like, here in Orlando so that was really really weird also I think the weather service had it messed up because it said tornado warning and then it's like oh like there are conditions for a tornado but it's like the reverse it's like a tornado watch is the conditions are right a tornado warning is if a tornado has been spotted so i don't know why they said tornado warning when it was just a watch um but someone did post in like the neighborhood app or at the ring doorbell app the video they were on i think it was on i4 they saw like a funnel it hadn't touched down but they saw the funnel so that was pretty crazy so before bed, before like we put the boys to bed, we just like gathered in the hallway and just kind of hung out and like read stories for like 30 minutes while um, the warning went away. So that was our crazy afternoon. So I didn't really get to do as much embroidery as I was wanting to do. So that's a little bit mm, annoying. And especially because like, I'm gonna lose tomorrow night too since I'm gonna be driving down. It's a little bit stressful because I kind of have some stuff that I want to get done like more of so that's a little bit frustrating but something that I did do is a test of this one I did the respect the locals it's the little manatee one on a tank top and I didn't realize that I did this but it's longer than my heat press is actually so i had to do this in like two separate pressings and because the lines are like pretty skinny i wanted to make sure that they were on there super good so i pressed it for way longer than like i usually would so this took me kind of a long time um almost like double the time anything else would take me probably actually quadruple since i like doubled the time pressing and then i had to do it twice so this took me kind of a long time but i guess this is what i'm going to be working on tonight. Ethan actually went to Chick-fil-A to get us something to eat. Um, so that's what he is working on right now while I'm working on this. So yeah, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and start 
prepping these shirts also I ran out of tender touch so I ordered that and some more of the soft and sheer on Amazon and hopefully those get here tomorrow in enough time for me to put it on the shirts and pack up before I leave so hopefully that works out you know what I should have done I didn't even think about it I guess because I ordered it to um, too late and also it probably wouldn't have worked out with the storm or anything like that but I guess I could have spent an extra seven dollars to get stuff delivered today or to like pick my window when in the morning to have it delivered it is what it is you got to do what you got to do so I'm going to try to go ahead and press some more of these and maybe if I get done with that I'll go ahead and press my tender touch um I'll see if I have enough time for that but I'm gonna go ahead and set you up a tripod and show you what I'm doing So last night I was able to finish all of the Respect the Local Manatee um, tank tops. So I got all of those done. So thankfully I don't have to worry about doing those today. Um, but the weather was crazy last night. I didn't really get started working until like 8.45 or something like that. So I tried to get all of that done last night. And thankfully I did. But it made it so that I stayed up really late last night. So today I'm going to try to get as much done as possible possible because I'm gonna have to pack up and leave pretty much like as soon as Ethan gets home so I don't get down to the hotel too late so today is a travel day obviously so what I'm gonna probably try to do today during nap time is I'm gonna try to finish the rest of the sun-kissed shirts on the umber so I'm gonna try to knock all of those out and when I'm done with that I'll work on some more of the Florida collage kind of unfortunately like I ordered the um, tinder touch yesterday like i was saying yesterday i ordered it yesterday and it said it's not going to be delivered until today between like 5 15 and 9 15. oh now it says 5 30 to 9 30. so there are like a couple of shirts that i'm not going to be able to bring with me which is like kind of stressful but i did do all of the um i did do all of the kid manatees or anything that had a manatee on it i was able to put the tender touch but there's a lot of strawberries that i wasn't able to put the tender touch on so it's okay it's not like the end of the world but it's kind of annoying but so i'm gonna make my goal for this weekend really high now especially because i had to pay for like the hotel and everything so it's a little bit unfortunate i want to be able to bring as much stuff as possible but before i get started on prepping these shirts to press I wanted to talk about a post I saw in a Facebook group last night and kind of like one kind of like give my opinion on it and then to like see if you guys have had a similar experience or if you have kind of a story or an opinion to share about this so I'm in this vendor display group and it's called vendor display ideas creativity and inspiration and this person posted this is going to be vague, but I need some help. We've been invited to set up for a July 4th event in Orlando. Near me? It's $500 for about a five hour event. Five hour event, $500, 4th of July. It's an evening event, which is $500. We absolutely don't have it right now and we'll have to scrape it together. But the event coordinator I talked to said they're expecting a turnout of about 100,000 people. And they basically say like this could be a really good opportunity for us but they're new to the small business world and vendor events like what do people think and all i have to say about that and if you're watching this and you are getting into craft fairs or you're a seasoned vet that sounds really scammy and fishy to me and all the comments were like no like do not do that that's like really really weird and a couple things that like i was thinking about and i'm sure there were comments about this too if you're being invited to an event and it's like supposed to be like a really huge event and you're paying money for it like like paying big money like $500 odds are they've got people 
who are applying to do it like why would an organizer have to approach a new business to be like oh like you know we're having this really big event it's five hundred dollars for five hours like it's gonna be super good like do you want to come it just doesn't really make sense because i think about like for example i'm doing a market in um and I'm doing the market Elaine and you had to pay like $15 just to apply for that but the actual market itself is only like 70 or something like that so it's like they're they're having to have people pay money because there are so many people wanting to bend there so it's kind of like my thoughts are if it's gonna be a good event people are gonna want to apply to been there so it doesn't really make sense that you would be approached and invited to something that's supposed to be really big and i she didn't say what the event was so i can message her privately and she said it's this thing called like fireworks fireworks in the park or something like that and it's in lake eola and a couple of thoughts about that i've done a ton of events in the lake eola area and like no like a hundred thousand people are not coming out to fireworks in lake eola there's not there's nowhere to park in downtown Orlando for a hundred thousand people. So like, it doesn't really make sense. And if people are going there for like a 4th of July, like fireworks show, they're not coming to like shop at your business. So super duper weird. I was like, do not do that. Like I messaged her privately. I was like, do not do that. That's like really, really, that's really weird. Also like the event coordinator saying that there's going to be that many people there. Like she doesn't know that. Or like, I don't know if it's a, I don't know. Like, how would they have any anticipation for like what turnout is going to be but it just seems like really really weird and really fishy and like five hundred dollars she was like saying that they didn't have the five hundred dollars to put down so it's like why would you take the risk i don't know just just kind of like a weird situation so yeah if if someone approaches you to do their event and it's really really pricey like don't do it because like i think about also i do market for makers which is a really really pricey event but it's two days and it's like heavily marketed i didn't even know like what she was talking about and i live in orlando so it's like if i didn't even know what the event was how how are other people gonna know because also i like seek out opportunities to vend at places so it's just like really weird that there would be an event that i've never heard of it'd be like 500 dollars in orlando just kind of weird so like i do market for makers and yeah that's like this time it's gonna be five hundred dollars last time it was 750 but that event two days very very like intensely marketed and it's an actual like market it's not just like a fireworks event that has vendors so i'm kind of ranting now but let me know if you guys have experienced anything weird like that or what your thoughts on it but yeah i just thought that was like a totally weird thing and she was definitely like posting in the group to get validation on like that she shouldn't do it and all the other comments are very similar to what i was saying that that's weird and you shouldn't do it so yeah that's what i have to say about that so i'm gonna go ahead and get you pressing these shirts and getting them ready you say you don't want to get in trouble that you don't find because you got me I don't wanna break your little bubble But you gotta wake up to reality Cause I can see in your eyes Your head is full of dreams Tears are a proof of failure You just gotta let Try 
four o'clock and I just showed you my pile of Florida collage shirts that I got done. So I'm really pleasantly pleased that I was able to get that done. So I have two of every size in this pile, except I couldn't find my 3X in my box. So maybe I accidentally put it in a different box, but I should have some 3Xs in this pile right here. So, and I should have like 3Xs that I've not sold at events, so I should have enough. So I've got that, and then I've got that pile of the Florida Collage, and then I have the Florida Collage. I've got two of each size in the tank tops. I've got two of each size in the manatee tank tops. I've got almost all of my, um, almost all of my kid manatee shirts and all of the adult manatee shirts, but there are a couple that I'm not gonna be able to bring because the tender touch isn't gonna be delivered until like after I'm gone. So that's a little bit annoying, but you know, whatever. So I definitely hope I have enough inventory. I mean, I have a ton of inventory, obviously, but I hopefully I have like enough of like, like enough different sizes so that I have enough for people if they want different sizes and stuff. So probably what I'm gonna do for the rest of nap time today is just cut the jump stitches and the stabilizer on the back of the black strawberry shirts I've been working on and go ahead and get those prepped for next week, being able to put the tender touch on that. So I'll probably work on that and starting to pack up and getting ready to go so that when Ethan gets here, he can just go ahead and put everything in the car. But I probably won't film any of that. I'll just go ahead and try to like knock that out so the next time you see me i will be headed down to bradenton to check into my hotel and kind of gear up for my two-day market weekend so i'm excited i'm a little bit nervous obviously because it's i guess like because i'm not going to be coming back home it seems like a little bit more intense and in depth compared to like if i just had to drive there and drive back so i'm a little bit nervous it makes it kind of like more of an ordeal um i guess it's less of an ordeal in terms of like i don't have to drive back and forth but it's more of an ordeal because i'm not going to come back home so it's going to be a whole weekend away so i'm not super stoked about that but i am super stoked in terms of i think it's going to go really well if it doesn't go really well i'll know for next year to not do it again but yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here and i hope you really liked it if you did please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more behind the scenes small business content and craft for vlogs and i hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching bye let's place we could have been waiting for the right day like the right day ever comes now it's